Well, hello, my friends, it's Sean Petit, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. And look at this gorgeousness we're creating. I'm starting today's project a new way on my 12 by 12 gel plate. This is a gel press gel plate. I'm using the bird's nest stencil and the Mediterranean duo stencil. Um, and all the stencils that I use today will be on sale this week. But I, I'm using teal, Lucas Acrylic Teal, and I used um, Muted Gray, a new paint that I got from Liquitex for the bird's nest. And of course, some quinacridone magenta, because everything is better with quin magenta. Um, so I put my, I stenciled my layers out here, and I'm just making some marks and having fun and playing. Now, I will admit to you that this is the second time that I did this because the first time I did it wrong. <laughs> but it all played into the inspiration behind this piece. So I put all of my stuff down. I made my marks. I did my stenciling. Now I did it right. And I'm going to cover it's completely dry on my gel plate. I'm going to cover it up with the, my light colored background. And that's a mixture of some morning mist and some um, white. I've got some real thin like packing paper that I'm using to pull my print from and it was perfect. It was a little bright for me so you'll see me tone it down here in a minute but that's exactly what I was going for. Look at that. Fun, fun, fun. But it was really too bright because I wanted it to be subtle. I wanted it to be neutral and something you know slightly different for me so I put out some more white paint on my gel plate and I'm gonna um, just kind of make some marks in there with my um, little color shaper tool just because why not and then I'm just gonna pick up real quick the first layer because that would have been it would have completely covered up my my print so now I'm laying the print that I pulled down to kind of tone that down and it was perfect it led me to exactly where I wanted to go and um, it looks grungy it looks scratchy look at that <clears throat> it's perfect now I know you're probably thinking well you just kind of ruined the whole thing it it didn't though those layers show through and that bird's nest is there I'll go back over it but it's that extra added depth to the bird's nest so I'm putting my print down now with some Liquitex Fluid Matte Medium and um, just kind of pressing that out with my brayer so that I can get a lot of the wrinkles. I didn't want to get all of the wrinkles out because I love the wrinkles. Um, and just giving it a good coat all the way around and covering it with my medium. The paper was real thin so it was a little hard to get all the bubbles out. Uh, not all, but some of the bubbles out. Now that paper that I just showed you was the first um, one of the first prints um, that I pulled and you can see how it was just a big jumbled mess and that's okay because happy accidents that paper is gorgeous and it was perfect for the background and that those dark corners show up so beautifully and look so scratchy and grungy um, in the final piece and then that white is that extra white that I picked up and so I'm just kind of placing some papers around as if I was thinking as if like I was putting down some gesso or some texture paste. I've got a Neo Color 2 crayon out here because I wanted I wanted this to be really grungy, really different, really unexpected. And um, now I'm just going in with some gesso and kind of kind of create my background and get this real kind of grungy, um, scratchy. Um, background and I'll do a couple layers I'll use a little bit of um, medium gray and a little bit of that um, muted gray from Liquitex in the background and I'm just doing messy brush strokes all of the supplies will be listed on the blog and the link to the blog will be down below in the YouTube description box Just kind of picking that up and I'll do this a couple times throughout because I really wanted this to be faded and grungy and not new looking. I'm adding just a few brayer marks with some gesso. And 
And I'm just going to come back in and kind of scrub that out. I put my word, these, I had a lot of words um, that went with today's inspiration, but these are the ones that spoke to me at the moment. Putting those down with a little bit of fluid matte medium and kind of giving them a dusting of gesso so that they blend into the background. I've got my little flowers stencil out here and um, I'm just kind of creating this abstract branch and it was so, I loved how it turned out. It just looks so great. And so I'm going to stencil this out and I'm stenciling it out with that muted gray. And then I'll come back in and wipe it down be and with a little bit of alcohol on my rag because I don't want it to, again to look new, I want it to, to be faded. Same muted gray for the bird's nest and same process of wiping it down and making it look worn out. I love how as I'm wiping it down that muted gray it's you know that muted gray's got this kind of purple violet color how it's kind of creating this shadow all the way around the nest it's it's perfect it's just gorgeous adding a little bit of that um, um, muted gray around the piece to kind of balance out that that color throughout Now I, I pulled out some papers because I thought I was going to add to the nest um, and these are some of the gel print um, papers and I didn't like that and I'd had, I got some words too because I thought I'd incorporate some words and I put those out and I didn't like that either. I loved it just the way that it was looking. So, nope, that doesn't work. So I just moved on. <laughs> and now I'm just going to start the shading process. And I'm doing loose, loose lines, adding branches, adding leaves, adding little swirly, viney things, um, just real loosely to really kind of add to it, give it a real organic feel. And I'm using my General's Charcoal Pencil.
got my <clears throat> black soft pastel out here and I'm just going to shade the edges and add a few finishing touches with some gesso and some additional shading. And that is it, my friends. Uh, so much fun and so much meaning. I hope you stick around for the conversation at the end. Um, this piece happened um, so unexpectedly. So I hope you stick around for that conversation. Again, all the supplies will be listed on the blog and the link to the blog is down below in the YouTube description box. And I hope you enjoyed today's project. And if you did, subscribe and like and hit that alarm bell so you never miss a video. Thank you for being here and I'll see you next week. Well, hello lovies and happy Sunday to you. I'm so glad that you are here. Um, what an amazing piece this was. Uh, it was such it was such an experiment and such an, an a happy accident. It really was how everything came together. Um, and I'll go over that in just a second. But um, I love it when that happens. Um, and it's so important to kind of pay attention to those moments when things start happening like that. But a um, couple things about today's project. So the stencils that I use, the bird's nest, the little flowers, and then the Mediterranean duo stencil. Can't remember which one it was, but the ones for the kind of the backgrounds. Um, those will be on sale this week. And then um, just some fun with my gel plate. So, ah, gosh, I just so good I just love the coloring I was I want I was wanting to do something like this so um, I just kind of went with it it just kind of happened and I love that and I love the meaning behind it how it all came together um, anyway so a couple of things really quick I just want to show you so uh, let's see is it better there or is it better there these, I'll do it down here. I think you can probably see it better. These are the Feathered Friends, and that's the new workshop that's coming out next week. Um, I'm wrapping up the just the last little bits of stuff this week, and we'll have it in the, in the workshop area. But um, so these are the three, three main, um, so a bird, an owl, and a hummingbird so so gorgeous so much fun i thoroughly enjoyed this process um, i just i got lost in it i really did um, but these are the three projects that we'll do in the workshop and then if you sign up during the early birds time which will have will start next week um, you get an um an, another owl um, project plus you get five different backgrounds so one two three four and then there's an additional background um, I oh, I knew it was around here somewhere we experiment and I have a lot of examples but this is the additional background and we kind of experiment with um, a few things so anyway um, that that is the feathered friends workshop coming to you next week so I'm super excited about it. I hope you will love it as much as I have. And uh, let's see, there's tons and tons of new collage packs in the shop and I know you guys have been grabbing them. They're so good. Uh, we've been working hard on some really fun collage packs for you. So, um, all right, that is it for stuff. So this piece actually came together in the most serendipitous way. Um, I was, it had been a super busy week and there'd been a lot of things going on and all kinds of stuff. And um, I was really struggling with trying to find some inspiration of what, what I was gonna do for, the, for this Sunday and all that kind of stuff. And usually when that happens, I wait because it, you, it always happens most of the time and if it doesn't happen if I have no inspiration then I don't want to force it I don't want to be fake about what I'm doing or you know what's leading me and that kind of thing so you know I will create something generic you know just kind of whatever without that kind of true true inspiration and meaning behind it 
Um, and that's always good too. It doesn't always have to be something deep and profound. I hope you guys know that. It's just that's how I normally create um, from those inspiration moments. Um, but <clears throat> so normally I just wait. And um, most of the time something happens, or something sparks something and I will find some inspiration. Well, I have this, it's my studio is really super cold. Um, and in fact, I have the heater going, you might hear it. I have the heater going right now because we had some freak snowstorm where we got like six inches of snow. The power's been out. Um, it's, yeah, welcome to Ohio. Um, but, so I have this sweater on and it's big and thick and it's long and so I wear it a lot in the studio and as I was coming around the corner into my studio to get some stuff done my sweater hooked on to my rack is over here um, right as you kind of come in my door it hooked on to a stencil because my stencils have hooks on them that are hanging on a rack and it like embedded into the bottom of my sweater. Like I had to actually take it off of the rack and kind of unweave it from my sweater. And it was the bird nest um, uh, stencil. And I was like, oh man, I haven't used that in a while. And I was like, oh, I wonder, I wonder if there's, it's kind of spring, I, sh I should think about doing something like that. So I just laid it on my desk without thinking that it would be something for this Sunday. And as I passed by it, as I was, you know, doing all my things and it was still on my desk and I was still right there, I kept thinking about it. I'm like, what, what does a bird's nest represent for me? And um, like, what examples, you know, like spring, new beginnings, new things, you know? And I was like, new beginnings. I'm like, I've used, I've overused new beginnings. <laughs> I'm like, that's not a, that's not nothing that really truly inspired me at the moment. And so I just kind of went about my day. And then um, as I was um, getting ready for bed that night, um, I usually kind of, you know, have my routine or whatever. And I lay in bed and I kind of scroll through Pinterest um, and get ideas or colors or things, whatever. And um, as I began to do that, all of a sudden, the, the, the thought process of the bird's nest like came flooding through like new, like just new, um, that word new. Because I, I was thinking about the eggs in the nest and then the, them cracking open and the birds coming out and getting stronger and then launching and all of those kinds of things. And so kind of in like a stream of consciousness, I just began writing everything that I was thinking about what the bird's nest represented. And um, I wrote new birth, new grace, new wings, new courage, new strength, new rest, new patience. And then I, then I crossed out patience because I'm like, and then I put a smiley face over to the side because I thought, that's not, I don't have new patience. I'm not a patient person. Um, new discoveries, new understanding, new art, new focus, the shedding of the old, shaky but first, shaky but ready to launch. Mm. New stories, new journey, new adventures, new vulnerability breaking open and new wonder, new hope, new vision. Don't be afraid to shift, to change, even when others question it. That's what, as I started writing all of these things down, and sometimes that stream of consciousness as we write, as we journal, because normally this happens as I'm journaling out in the morning, but this happened at night and I have a pen on my phone so I could just write it out. And, um, don't be afraid to shift and change when others, even if others question it. So there was so much, so much in that like stream of thought that I, I just wrote everything as fast as I could. And I started to think now more seriously about the bird's nest as my inspiration and how I would use it. 
And, um, and I thought about new art and new visions and new vulnerability and all those kinds of things because the nest to me is a vulnerable thing. Um, the eggs are there, they're waiting to hatch. I mean, all the symbolism around that worked into what I was thinking and what I wrote and all of that. And so part of that fits into where I am right now because I feel this great shift within me and I shared last week about courage and doing it afraid and how I'm taking steps to do some things that I have been super afraid about and um, self-conscious about or, or doubtful, self-doubt, all those kinds of things. And um, that kind of played into this week's of that new vulnerability. Because anytime you um, make a change or make a shift or share that you are making a change or a shift, um, it's very vulnerable. And it's new and you don't know the steps and you're not sure where you're going and you just don't know, but you're shaky. And I'm thinking about those baby birds and their wings or, you know, they're, not, they're very, very shaky. And so all of that came into play as I started really kind of putting this together in my head. And so I wanted to do something new. I wanted to do new, something new with this piece. So that's why I started with the gel plate. Um, and I laid it out, you know, like I put all of the layers in and the first layer was wrong. I, the f first layer was the papers <laughs> that I used for the background. I put the layers on, on wrong. And then when I pulled it, it was just, just that. But it was still beautiful. I looked at the, all of the different things that were involved in the papers and they were gorgeous. And that's what happens when we shift, when we change, when we do things afraid. When we step outside our comfort zone and we try something new, um, we don't get it right the first time. But you try it again. And so I did. I tried it again. And um, <clears throat> the second layer was what I wanted. It was a little too bright, so I toned it down. So those processes, that process of this new adventure, new learning, new art, new shifting and changing, um, there's a process to it and it's, and it's bumpy and it's awkward and you don't know what you're doing, but you do it and you learn and you just like the, the, the gel print was like the perfect example. I wish I could have filmed the first part of me messing it all up because it would have been perfect, a perfect example of what I'm talking about when you start something new, when you shift, when you change, when you go for something that you haven't done before. Um, and that's why I wrote in here, new joy, new understanding, new grace, all these things. I mean, I have a list of words that I thought about putting on here and I, I limited them down to the things that felt good to me, that felt um, appropriate for where I'm at right now. So this, and this shift has been happening, I think it's probably happening for a lot of people over the last year and a half that we've all been through um, with so many things happening. And um, I think it changed, I know it's changed me and it's changed how I've looked at my art, how I've looked at my business, how I've done all of those things. And um, I think that new joy, new understanding, new vulnerability, new shifts, new changes are wonderful, are amazing. It's part of our growth. And at the same time, super scary because we don't know what we're doing. And that's okay. And I just want you to know that whatever new you might be experiencing, whatever new you might be trying, be okay with being messy, with it being messy. Be okay with it being bad. Be okay with it and clunk around in it. And um, whatever it is, it could be art, it could be relationships, it could be a job. No one shows up at a new job and knows everything that they're supposed to do, right? Um, and that's the way it is with anything new that we try. And so, 
celebrate the new, celebrate the shift, even if it's uncomfortable, even if it's awkward, even if you pull a gel print that is nothing after you've spent the hour of layering the right layers, be okay with it. That's the process. That's how we learn. That's how we grow. And um, when we can be grateful for um, the messy parts that we start with and the, the things that we just don't know, um, then we're so much more grateful for when it actually goes right, when things start going in the direction, the right direction. And sometimes that's a short period and sometimes that's a longer period. And so um, all of this, this I, I just love how this came together, how the thing caught on my sweater, I mean, how at the end of the day, all of that kind of new, new vulnerability, new art, new shifts, new, 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 um, how it came together with the symbolism of the bird's nest and I could visualize the birds. So that was my process this week. And I went neutrals because I wanted it to be new. I wanted it to be different. I wanted it to not be my usual thing because that was kind of the theme. New joy, new understanding, new grace, new, new grace on ourselves as we are going through whatever newness we are going through. Um, so I wanted it to be different and that's why I did it this way. And I love the colors. I love the, the um, muted gray and the Payne's gray as the bird's nest gorgeous. All right, my friends, that is it. That is my inspiration for this Sunday. So I hope that um, whatever new you are feeling, whatever shift, whatever rumbling in your soul, and I think we all know it when that happens, like I want to do something different, but you're not exactly sure. Sit with it. Um, um, give it some water, feed it a little bit so that so that you can feel what it is that needs to happen within you. And um, then embrace it. Embrace all the awkward, bumpy, messy parts um, that happen as we change, as we grow, as we shift, as we enter into new whatever it is. All right, my loves, have a wonderful Sunday. Um, may it be restful and peaceful and may you find whatever it is new that you're uh, experiencing and embrace the, the awkward in it. Um, and I hope that you always, always know that you are 